Hello, my name is Amit Chopra from Refinitiv, and as I have with me, General Manager Khalid Khurbi of Adib Securities. Um, Khalid, this is part two of the series. We've spoken about the market and the economy in general, but I really want to get your expert opinion, um, as this is your business and your baby, uh, about the equities market. Um, we've not seen a lot of activity in this space, uh, per se, and we would like to understand, we've mentioned liquidity, we've mentioned, you know, uh, lack of successful IPOs, per se, but what is the equities market? Give us a little bit of an overview, uh, per se, what's going on in the UAE and the other markets that you function in, and then we'll take it from there. Sure. Good to see you again, Amit. The uh, UAE is the second largest in the region in terms of the, the, the stock exchange. Of course, Saudi is, is the number one stock uh, exchange in, in the region here. The UAE, uh, with, with about 135, 140 companies listed, uh, comprises uh, three main major sectors. Uh, there are the finance, uh, financials, the real estate, and some service uh, sector as well. There, overall, uh, we've not, we've, we haven't been seeing enough IPOs coming out to fuel uh, uh, and to attract investors to come in uh, to participate in the growth of the uh, IPO market. So th th this is one of the uh, areas where I believe uh, it, it has to start uh, from within. Uh, we cannot simply uh, wait for cross listings to take place in order for us to uh, drive uh, our stock exchanges into, into the next level. Uh, there has been multiple uh, reasons why we haven't seen uh, enough growth in, in, the, in the IPO business. Now, Technically speaking, when, when you uh, have a company go into the stock market to raise capital, uh, that, that is the fundamental uh, reason why, why stock exchanges exist. Absolutely. Uh, not, not to speculate and, and not to, uh, to look for short-term uh, investments. And in, in terms of the, uh, the, the appetite, uh, th there has been, of course, attempts from uh, some companies uh, to come into to the market where uh, the moment when if they realize that it isn't uh, attractive enough or the timing isn't right that they would pull, pull out and uh, postpone th their listings. I believe in, in, in terms of uh, how we would bring in liquidity uh, and increase liquidity on the local stock market, this has to come through a privatization program. We spoke about this in the last time we, we met and I believe that this is also uh, an area where we, we still uh, need to see a lot of uh, uh, planning to, to take it forward. I mean, if we look at uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, I don't want to re refer to, to them as, as government-owned uh, um, uh, enterprises or entities, but, but these are uh, basically the crown jewels of, of the uh, UE economy. And uh, there is a lot of in foreign investment and foreign investors who would like to participate in such growth of such entities. Uh, if we take, for example, Emirates Airlines, it's a brand that's all over the world. It has surpassed by far any uh, airline that I've ever heard of in terms of their stre strength uh, in, in, in promoting their, their name and, and tourism in the country. Uh, th there's a lot of uh, basically uh, uh, institutional investors who would love to be part of the growth and participate in the growth of, of Emirates Airlines, for example. Uh, and the story of, of Emirates itself. Uh, so even with a smaller uh, sort of listing of, of Emirates, it, it would uh, again bring new fresh uh, liquidity to, to the local market. It will uh, give it more uh, depth uh, when, when, when uh, foreign institutions see uh, such large brand, sure. well-known brand listed. So you mentioned UAE is number two. Obviously, we know Saudi is the biggest market in the region as well. Could you give our um, you know, listeners a little bit of an overview of the Saudi market and, and what do you see from, from your perspective? Sure. Saudi has had a lot of uh, positive uh, reforms in the last uh, two to three years. It had uh, a very strong influx of, of foreign uh, investment. Just uh, recently, the, the stock market has been uh, included uh, in the MSCI Emerging, uh, Markets. Emerging Market Index, and uh, that, that has actually now started to take effect. So that they're expecting uh, something around 70 billion US dollars to, to be deployed 
into certain companies that will eventually be included on the on the index itself. Uh, Saudi uh, is definitely uh, a major uh, uh, market in, in the region. Uh, the uh, demand for uh, Saudi equities will be very strong uh, once the once once the laws allows uh, full and easier uh, access to, to to Saudi shares. At the moment, uh, while foreigners can still own shares in, in Saudi, but it has to go through uh, a different arrangement rather than traditionally to open a brokerage account and buy directly from, from your broker in Saudi. But I believe uh, Saudi would uh, lead the, uh, the way in terms of uh, additional listings, in terms of uh, becoming a stronger capital market uh, for the region. Okay. Well, we've heard a, a lot of positive comments about UAE, its potential, Saudi and its potential, and how it's going to come true per se. But there's also been, um, you know, some concerns around the trust in the company's financials. You know, one year we see, you know, certain equities out there that are reporting, you know, great results versus we find out about 12 months later that it's not the case. You mentioned that, you know, you're investing in a company more long term, you're not being speculative. So with, you know, situations like this, how can we build that trust back into the market? Yeah. You know, what needs to be done? It, it is unfortunate when, when we do see uh, some, some examples from time to time. Now, th th there are a lot of excellent uh, brands and names that are uh, listed on, on the UE exchanges. Names that, that basically resembles the major banks, the major real estate companies. Unfortunately, from time to time, you do see some uh, companies that had failed to, to uh, adhere and to comply to, to, the, to, to the basic uh, accounting uh, standards. And wh when that happens, it does uh, sort of... Do you believe we need stricter standards? Uh, I, I don't think the, the, the regulators uh, uh, are not doing enough. I think they are. Uh, the, the there are sometimes uh, a uh, sort of a thin line between how much would, would the regulator want to go in and, and, and investigate or to, to look at every company's uh, financials in depth before something like this happened. But I guess what we could uh, learn from uh, some uh, examples that there has to be probably an earlier alarm that would come on whereby someone would go in and just look at their, their books and uh, ensure that things are uh, in order and if not at least alert the investors so that so investors could it be a, a private ratings agencies like we have in more in the western world and the more developed economies yeah. per se that need to look at these stocks and you know what else can maybe the private sector do if not the regulators uh, in this space yeah it, it's, a, it's a good point in terms of having uh, well the, the uh, market does have uh, good analysts out there uh, looking at companies' financials, companies that are listed, and putting out their recommendations on, on some of these names. Uh, in terms of uh, private or, or publicly listed companies, uh, you know, there they, are really uh, not much that, that you can do to by, by employing uh, an agency or, or an entity to basically look at, look at their... Uh, uh, status and, and determine whether they are an A rated or a B rated or a C rated. A lot of it is, is done through uh, private companies that, that conduct uh, very thorough research about the company's financials management uh, and then they basi based, based on that they put out uh, a recommendation whether, whether this company is, is, is a strong buy or not. I don't think really the, the solution to that would be to, to have a rating assigned uh, by, by uh, like a government agency to towards the, these companies. But I would say that there should be uh, more uh, closer uh, monitoring when things don't look right uh, to have somebody step in and uh, try to, to, to probe and see what, what really is the, uh, okay. the, 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 what the issue is from the beginning. Yeah. So you know, we are pretty bullish uh, as, as Refinitiv. This is our business, so is it yours. But uh, if somebody were outside of the financial markets in terms of the profession or in general knowledge per se, traditionally they look towards real estate as an area for wealth management, future planning, their retirement, 
uh, rental income and yields and so on and so forth. But recently we've started seeing, um, you know, due to the shift in the market, that it's harder and harder uh, to buy that first property. The loan to value ratios for expats are, are, are pretty high. Um, until you don't save up enough capital, uh, it's a possibility that is, uh, you know, out of reach for a lot of people, um, as, as we can see in this part of the world as yeah, well. Yeah. You know, we believe that equity markets do offer a solution. Do you want to sort of, you know, shed some light on that, uh, per se? How does the equities market compare as an investment vehicle or, or, a, or an area for wealth management and future planning? Well, w when, when we um, uh, used to see uh, what, what they call uh, real estate flippers, where uh, someone would, would uh, uh, flip a property just like they would flip uh, a stock listed on the yes. stock exchange. <laughs> a lot of it now has, has ba basically uh, is gone. And, and that led to what you've mentioned earlier in terms of increasing the, the amount of uh, uh, down payments that, that an individual have to put in order to, to acquire uh, his or her first uh, property. Uh, well, on, on the equity side, uh, of course, the uh, story is much simpler and easier for an investor to open a trading account in Dubai or Abu Dhabi and start trading almost uh, the next day. Uh, the uh, question is, uh, goes really in into, again, uh, as an investor and not a speculator. A speculator, in my opinion, uh, d does not have to have a, a strategy uh, other than perhaps some technical analysis that that would help the the speculator in terms of uh, what level uh, should should uh, they enter or exit. Fundamentally uh, speaking, if you were to be looking at your overall portfolio, what you want to invest in, uh, th there has to be the good old uh, diversification uh, risk management methodology there. Correct. So, uh, and and there are uh, reasons why someone would would put uh, eighty percent of their investments into real estate or into equities or 80% of it into re real estate. Uh, but, but generally speaking, uh, a, a well diversified portfolio would have a, a mixture of uh, real estate, uh, equities, or perhaps uh, funds, uh, sukuk, cash, uh, alternative investments, commodities, etc., etc. On the on the equity side in the UAE, the, the brand names and the good names have historically uh, been uh, phenomenally doing well in terms of their dividend yield and their dividend payout to investors. Uh, if the investor is careful in terms of where they uh, deploy their money, they, they would just uh, continue to invest in those companies and earn the, the dividend at the end of the year without having to worry about the price fluctuation. Real estate, on, on the other hand, it requires a huge capital uh, commitment to start with. And uh, th the real estate, of course, you cannot be living in 20 different homes or 20 different apartments. So your 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 uh, primary home, and then you're buying uh, four or five to ten more, depending on your liquidity, uh, for the sake of earning some yield on on your rental. Uh, you have to take into consideration, of course, the cost of of uh, maintaining the property from service charges. To and I'm imagining these costs don't exist in the equities market, obviously. Not uh, at all. Uh, th this is really why why equities has always been a uh, much easier and a much uh, faster way to, to uh, deploy some, some investments in. Uh, but at the end of the day, you cannot really d d depend on one uh, and, and leave out the other. Uh, overall, I, I think uh, a prudent investor would, would continue to uh, rebalance uh, th their investments between equities and, and uh, real estate uh, and fixed income uh, sukuk investments uh, throughout their, their investment uh, cycle. Perfect thought. Let's hold it there because I want to talk to you in part three about exactly that. How do I get into this market? Transaction fees, the brokerage business in general. But what we've heard today essentially is that the equities market is ripe for growth. Yes, it is facing some headwinds with liquidity. It is facing some headwinds in terms of you know, new IPOs that need to come in. And, and Khaled's you know, gracefully given us some very interesting ideas, low-hanging fruit uh, that we can go after. The trust issues that we have, we can definitely overcome, uh, and, and there is a lot of growth that we can have. And the equities market, per se, specifically for the retail investors, is, is, is ripe for getting into. The ease of doing business is much more, um, and diversified portfolios is, is the way forward. So thank you very much, Khaled. In part three, we'll talk a lot more about it, and look forward to seeing you guys again.